presentation, I will be sharing my experience of how to get started with contributing to Prometheus. I would like to thank the Prometheus organizers for giving me the chance to present and Bartek and Gidrus who have been my mentors for the project and have helped me prepare the proposal draft. Before I get started with the presentation, I would like to address the tough time that we are currently facing. In the current world, where we have been seeing big layoffs and when we have been isolated from our friends and family, I would request all of you to please pay close attention to your mental health. Reach out, reach out to the people who are close to you if you feel that you have been facing any mental issue. Feel free to reach out to me if you want to talk to someone. You can reach out to me on my Twitter. My Twitter handle is statusfeeper1. With that out of the way, let's get started with the presentation. Starting with the outline. In this presentation, I will be covering a short introduction about me, my inspiration for getting into Prometheus, how to get started contributing to Prometheus community, my learnings from the project, and how to manage the steps and difficulties associated with it. And I'm currently a computer science student based out of India. My main motivation for being in computer science to me is to build products that help people around the world. Starting from the first year of my college, I started contributing to open source. And I feel very happy when people are using the products that I have contributed to. I'm a contributor to Wiki Education Dashboard, which is a tool used by students and other academics to improve Wikipedia. I'm also a contributor to Thanos, which is a highly available community with a long-term storage, about which I will be talking during my presentation. Apart from that, I also write about my learnings and internships on Medium. I have also been mentor for Wiki Education Dashboard through Outreach in Medium, where I help underrepresented society contribute to open source. Talking about my inspiration to contribute to contribute to Prometheus ecosystem, I came to know about Prometheus from my elder brother. He is also a computer. He is also a software developer and has a Prometheus sticker on the back of his notebook, which is the only sticker on his notebook. He explained to me how Prometheus is an important ecosystem, important monitoring ecosystem of cloud native applications. Usually, the biggest step for starting with the contribution, and I'm sure that all of you, most of you would re relate to it, is the very first step. Thus, I would request all of you that when you read or hear about things that excite you to learn more, please take the first step so that you would know more about the project. My first step for getting started with the contribution was to start watching the data project in which CNC listed all its projects. My, my main motivation was to contribute to the project that is used by thousands of developers around the world. It would be a great opportunity to learn Go, Go and other related technologies. It was because of my first step that I got that I got a mail notification about Community Bridge internship held by CNCF. I decided to apply for Thanos, in which I was selected as an intern. The detail about the application process were very straightforward, and I have mentioned them in my blog. I will not be able to go through it during my presentation, so I would request all of you to go through my blog and look at it afterwards. Talking about the project that I will be working on during my internship was retired coordination between different Thanos components. During my internship time, I had taken up a course in my college, taken up a distributed system course in my semester. And it was an excellent opportunity to learn about the different challenges faced in distributed system. I had a very little experience with Golang, and so I spent quite a time learning about Golang and reading about Prometheus because most of the concepts based of Thanos are based out of Prometheus. I decided to document my learning of Thanos code base project and Golang setup to which I could refer at later point of time. For my first contribution, my, my mentors Bartek and Gabriel assigned me a beginner level issue 
which gave me a lot of confidence to get the hang of the code base. In this slide, I want to cover very few basic processes that I followed during my internship. It might feel very basic, but I feel that they are very helpful for communication. The first of which was to make sure that all the communication between me and my mentors happens on public channels. Keeping the doubts on public channels would not only help people who have the same doubt, but other community members can also participate in this discussion. This made sure that I am not completely dependent on my mentors for help. I can post my doubts on the public channel. There were many handful community members who patiently helped me resolve the doubt. One, one important thing to take care, take care of you is to make sure that the language of your message seems like a request and not like a command. Remember that open source is full of volunteers who are taking out their time to help you resolve your doubt. Even though you might not have intended to post the messages as a command, it might can still come up as an authoritative message rather than a request. We should thus make sure before posting the message that the language of your message seems like a request. Here I have given a, given a two flag messages. The first one looks very demanding, like you are giving an order to do something. And the second one seems like a request. So this looks very basic, but please keep this in mind. The second process that we had was the weekly sync up session with my mentor to discuss any bloggers or any questions that I would have been facing. With this session, we had an upfront agenda on which we would be discussing, in which we, which like, which helped us uh, prepare for the discussion. Initially, we decided to have discussion every Thursday, but later we decided to schedule it as and when I was stuck. I would like to thank my mentors for being very flexible with the session. Here I have attached a screenshot to our agenda discussion. Here you can see the approaches to, to try out to try out pseudo code discussions, discussions made, etc. The link is also present in this slide. Please check this after the presentation. We also decided to break the project down into multiple individual GitHub issues so it can be better tracked and it is always better to look at individually smaller pull requests rather than a big pull request involving multiple changes. Here I have attached a screenshot which is referring to one of the big pull requests in which the discussion grew very big that my, Bart that my mentor Bartek was not able to comment anymore on the PR. Trust me, you do, don't want to get in such a situation. Talking about the talking about managing the difficulties and stress associated with the project, there are many challenges. Work challenges when you are working remotely on a project, especially related to collaboration and code review. There are also challenges related to time. Since there are not specific because you are you don't have any specific working hours, one might be inclined towards procrastination. I realize that working even a little bit, working every day, or even a little bit on the project is much better than keeping a backlog of things to do. This was more difficult than it seemed because I was working on the project alongside my semester study. There were a few weeks during which I had my exam and I couldn't make any contribution to the project. I realized that it is very important to communicate about any time related constraints with the mentors. Also another thing which is very important is to make sure that before you start with the implementation, you are on the same page with your mentors. This will make sure that if there are any corner cases that you are missing out are pointed out early on. A good way to make sure that you take all other scenarios into account is to make a detailed proposal which mentions the different approaches to solving the problem. One should focus on learning more about code conventions, have a good code quality and add more testers. This makes the code review cycle easier for meters and avoids going back and forth the pull request review. 
overall i would like to say that it was a fun experience working on the project not only did i learn about rolling prometheus and the monitoring landscape i also came to know about the processes to follow for collaborating remotely i feel pride in contributing to software used by thousands of developers around the world i also feel privileged to learn from my amazing mentors and the community members my mentors have been extremely patient and unconditional with me i remember my first call with them in which they had shared their experience share their motivation for having a career in computer science it was very inspiring the community members are also very welcoming and appreciative of your effort in contribution i learned a lot from making mistakes as well for example i in one pull request i didn't break it down i did into multiple individual pull requests the result was a huge pull request in which there were 27 file changes over 383 discussions on getup and over 30 days of work a better approach would have been to break it into individual tasks so there are some things that you learn by making mistake and i'm sure that i will not repeat my mistake the most noteworthy part of my project was my first contribution to the thanos project this made me feel confident that i can contribute to this project I also feel encouraged to help other people on their open source journey just like how I started by reading up a material written by other community members many students from Google Summer of Code reached out to me thanking for writing my blog on the internship I would like to end my presentation with the same emoji that I sent to Thanos Chan when Bartek merged the final pull request for my internship project This was my first time presenting at the conference. I hope this presentation inspires other fellow contributors to start with the Prometheus. Great, and we have Kat here today to answer any questions that participants might have. Kat, you're welcome to turn on your video. I see your microphone is on. Hello. Uh, can everyone see me now? Uh, yes. Excellent. We can see you and we can hear you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, everyone can post their doubts. Uh, if they have any doubts, um, I'm happy to answer any of them. Yes. While we're waiting for some questions to come in, when you hear your video again, do any new thoughts come to you? Uh, I feel that I could have done better. Uh, because this was my first presentation. I was quite nervous. Keeping it uh, recorded uh, helped a lot, but still, I think there were some points that I could have uh, been better about. Well, I think you did fantastic. Um, Thank so you. So, if you were, so you had a chance to record that a few days ago, and then if you were giving that presentation today, would you have said the same things, or is there anything that you learned since then that you would say differently? I guess I would have included some uh, other points too, uh, because usually when people start, they are uh, scared that uh, how can they like. When I started uh, contributing to Prometheus, I was really scared that uh, I won't be able to contribute. So uh, I think I should have more included about that. uh like even if uh, you are not a contributor to prometheus you can still uh, apply for community bridge and uh, get a chance to contribute to any of the cnc and cncf projects so i think i missed that uh, point have you been able to collaborate with other people um, how have you found the community to be um to be honest people are very sweet they are very helping uh they would uh, like my mentors used to spend hours uh trying to resolve my doubts so and uh, whenever i used to post my doubts on the slack channels people would uh, like all the community members would uh, answer uh, answer them and would help me so it was excellent all would you like to tell us a 
Would you like to tell us a little bit more about your journey as a developer? What brought you here? And in other words, what were, how many years have you been developing? And um, what, what are your, the skills that you enjoy using most? Um, well, uh, I wanted to, uh, like I have been contributing to open source from three years now. Uh, I wanted to apply for Prometheus uh, uh, three years back. Uh, from when I came to know about Prometheus. But uh, I used to feel that I don't really have such uh, skills right now to apply, I mean, to contribute. So I didn't really apply uh, back then. But uh, now uh, have, have, done, have been done two internships. I thought that I could apply for CNCF. And uh, I... I, I applied to community which we did not require any uh, requirements that you have to know pro, uh, Golang or any of the uh, projects. So I applied and uh, turns out that uh, when you have great mentors, you can, uh, you can do it. Uh, it just uh, takes some amount of extra time and uh, that's it. Thank you, Kat. And we've got some questions already coming in from attendees and participants. Here's one. What are your future plans with Thanos? Do you still get time to contribute? Um, currently, uh, I do not really get such time to contribute to Thanos, but I would really like to uh, become, I, I would really like to contribute more to Thanos. Uh, I really want to get into the community and uh, once I get free right now I'm busy with uh, uh, interviews so I hope that uh, like when I get free I would get more time to contribute to Thanos and maybe get in, uh, included in, in the community. Excellent. The next question, do you think there's a better components or an easy path for people who want to be contributors? I think the open source is the best way because uh, uh, I I myself started as an open source, uh, so I know that uh, it's very easy because uh, there are people out here to help you. Uh, like you can post your doubts, you can ask your mentors, uh, they would help you, and you have a live uh, system, a live project that would that would be used by thousands of people, and you would be working on that. So. Like this is being as a student, you are still getting to participate and work on a real software. So I think uh, open source is a great way to start your journey. Excellent. We'll head on with the next question. We've got an additional 12 minutes for questions for Kat, welcoming all questions from participants today. So the next question is what things could open source communities do to encourage participation from new users? Um, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm not really sure how, uh, how I can, uh, answer that, but, uh, I feel that open source is already giving, uh, many chances to people, uh, many, uh, many, uh, many chances to the new, uh, new contributors, uh, I like the, uh, community bridge approach that, uh, you do not really have to contribute uh you just uh, even if you are new uh if you are you, if you just want to contribute and uh if you are uh, even if you are not able to uh, complete the project uh but uh, you can still be selected because uh, uh this is just a learning opportunity so i feel that even google google summer of code or outreach should also follow this that uh, like because some students might find it difficult uh, when they are starting off, so they can like directly be selected as an intern and then mentors can help them. Outstanding, we had a comment here from PS in the chat. It says, Kat, thank you for your contribu contributions to Thanos. And then the next question that pops up here is from another participant. If you could change one thing about your internship with Thanos, what would it be? Uh, I would say that I wish I was not doing it alongside my uh, semester studies. 
uh, due to which uh, I was not able to give much time. And uh, at the end of the project, uh, even though I was able to uh, like complete the project, I was still sad and uh, that I was not able to give my full time. So I hope that uh, the next time uh, I would be able to give my full time. That's it. Fantastic. And what are some things that you're learning personally as a professional right now when you have time for self-improvement? What are you focusing on? Right now, I'm focusing on making my communication skills better. Uh, sometimes I kind of uh, come off a little bit strange or rude. And I didn't think so. Uh, I didn't think so at all. This is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and other people are agreeing in the chat yeah. too. So, by the way, um, yeah. how many languages or dialects can you speak? Um, to be honest, only three. Only three. That's two more than I can. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Yep, and you're getting more comments exactly just like that. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing that we can do this. You know, we're separated by thousands of miles and able to be in the same conversation and you along with all the other people who are participating here. It's a community working together, even though possibly never getting a chance to meet in person, but doing something that's core to each other's day-to-day -day work. We have a next question coming in from Arthur. Have you had any good job offers after your internship? Uh, I had one from Facebook as a production engineer inter for intern, but uh, that has been canceled due to uh, the COVID. And uh, uh, I recently have been uh, interviewing with uh, Google and Facebook for full-time opportunity as I will be graduating uh, next year. So, yeah. Fantastic. That's a great role model for others who can follow in your path. So if we have any additional questions, we have another five minutes or so. So um, if, where would you see yourself contributing to open source in say five years? Here, this is where you are now. Can you imagine where you might be in five years? Mm, uh, I wish that uh, I would be uh, like become like maybe uh, some, I, I want to uh, mentor others, uh, especially like I want to become a contributor uh, then mentor others, uh, like mentoring the different projects and then uh, would help or inspire others to also like inspire new students to contribute to open source. Because I myself started as an open source uh, and uh, from open source and I would want that others should also uh, contribute because this is an excellent way to uh, update your skills. Uh, when I started, I didn't really think that I had any skills. When I first applied for the RGSOG, I was not selected and I felt really, very really bad. But uh, I applied anyway uh, to outreach me and I was selected and that gave me a lot of confidence. So I would just like that I would become an Mainter than I could help others. That's fantastic. First, you think that you don't have the skills, and then before you know it, you're getting these job offers from these amazing companies. Yeah. Are there some moments about your interactions with people in the community or mentors where you someone did something or said something that helped you in some way? It it gave you the information that you needed or inspired you. When when you think of mentors what is most important for you to succeed? What do you want to see from mentors? Uh, from mentors, I would be like, I want my uh, mentee to be free to, uh, free to me. Like if there are any trouble that uh, he or she is facing, then I would want that, uh, that they could communicate to me. Uh, they could communicate, they shouldn't feel hesitant on asking any doubts. They shouldn't feel that they are asking me too many doubts or I am getting irritated or anything. They could uh, like uh, message me anytime. They could uh, ask me any doubts. So this is just, uh, this is a few things that I would uh, take, care, take care of as a, main, a mentor that I could give much more time and uh, be patient with my mentee. 
That's fantastic. Um, see, we have more and more people joining the call here. So many people are able to hear your story. Also, this is going to be recorded and distributed to many others. So it can also inspire people who were just like you a few years ago and help them realize that they can be you with hard work and dedication and an open heart. So a lot of other great comments here too. So I'm excited for you. I didn't even get the job offer, but I'm, I'm just excited <laughs> to hear that from you. You know, I, I do other software, but just to hear your story is very inspiring. And I know that- I felt when I started because I, I'm actually from a tier three college. So I've been always been scared about the placement and uh, I was very scared that I have to like, uh, I will be unemployed for an year and have to like beg others to give me uh, referrals to some companies and then maybe I could get in any one of them. And uh, like even a year back, I couldn't see myself or anywhere. But now uh, I can see that uh, I can see my future that, you know, I, uh, I am not really much scared about placements now. And yeah. I have another question. How do you explain open source to your family? Do they, do they know what you're doing? Or they say, God, why are you spending so much time over there on the computer? Uh, no, they actually uh, understand. My brother is also a software engineer. So uh, they have already been familiar to open source and I didn't really have to explain it to them. They are actually very happy uh, that, uh, you know, I'm, they are happy that I'm already working alongside my semester studies. So they think that I should actually spend more time on my laptop. So <laughs> yeah, even if they see me on my phone, they would be like, why are you not working? You should do something and something like that. All right, well, we have another question here. So, so it's wonderful to be in a supportive environment where your family is encouraging you to do all that you need to do. So here's a philosophical question. Someone says, do you think it is ethical to charge for software, to charge money for software? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there are well, people do charge for uh, their code and uh, like some people like to keep it uh, open and some people uh, would like to charge for it and it's up to them. Uh, and um, even keeping it uh, charged, I don't think so that uh, that is uh, that is wrong in any way. It's just uh, like some people think that, you know, I should be paid something I wrote or like that. So I can really see what's available. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. This is a wide and diverse community. So there are probably many opinions and you fearlessly shared yours and, and in the networking sessions at the end of the day, maybe this could be a topic for discussion. So I think that, let me give you a moment to wrap up with any final thoughts and then we'll get ready for the next presentation. Anything you'd like to share with us, Kat? Um, I would just say that uh, please, uh, or that don't be scared. Uh, don't be think that uh, you, are, uh, you are not something. Because when I started, I really never thought that uh, I would be, I mean, I could even get uh, uh, a chance to interview for Facebook or Google and I'm currently uh, interview interviewing with them. So this is very, very nice opportunity. And uh, please always take the first step. And uh, there are many excellent uh, open source programs in which you can participate. And uh, many communities that would help you get started with the open source journey. So please uh, participate. And uh, that's it. Final comment from one of the, the participants. Matthias says, amazing to hear about your story, Kat. So thank you for sharing today. We'll get the next presentation ready. And eventually we'll have some break between presentations as the day goes on. But thanks again for inspiring us. Brian will get the next presentation ready momentarily. Thanks for all those great questions.